The media is the enemy of the people. There's no other way to describe it. And so to add to my growing list of media personalities or news anchors or journalists that I um, or can't stand, I forgot in the previous video to add Jessica Tarlov to the list, but also highlight Greg Gutfeld and Jesse Waters as being breaths of fresh air. But on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have Jen Psaki or Jen Psaki. I don't know how you say her last name and I don't really care because she does shit like this. Just to give you a summary, basically Harris and her running mate, Tim Walls, fielded questions on past positions, on foreign policy, on the border, on what they would do on day one, who they want in their cabinet. I mean, they talked about a lot of things in this interview. That should settle this question, right? Everyone should be happy and kind of move on to the other important debates of the day? Of course not. Instead of dropping it, the target has simply been shifted. Now the attack isn't over whether or not Harris did an interview, but over whether or not she did it right. Many Trumpers are apparently angry that this was a joint interview with Harris and Walls. They're outraged. I mean, first of all, it's extremely common, you can see all the photos there, for candidates to do joint interviews. Just ask Barack Obama and Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine, or even Donald Trump himself. It's all even sillier when you compare these attacks with what Trump has been up to this week. I mean, first of all, he was re-indicted on charges related to his effort to subvert the last presidential election. His campaign was rebuked by the U.S. Army after an incident at Arlington National Cemetery earlier this week. He also reposted wildly crude remarks about Kamala Harris on social media and shared dozens of other dark, derogatory, disturbing posts this week. Posts that call for the jailing of people who have tried to hold them accountable, like special counsel Jack Smith and the lawmakers who investigated January 6th. That have AI images of his perceived enemies in orange jumpsuits and that promote QAnon conspiracy theories, just to name a few. I mean, that's kind of the choice facing voters in just 65 days. You can take issue with the timing or logistics of a television interview by a ticket who answered a range of substantive policy questions. That can be the hill you want to die on. Or you can take issue with all of that. They talked about a lot of things in this interview. I mean, technically that's true. But to leave the interview, the edited interview of only 18 minutes that they could squeeze out of, ring out of this after hours spent with Dana Bash and CNN, I wouldn't necessarily say that they walked away from this interview providing America, providing voters with any more information than we had when we walked in. In fact, I would be willing to bet that most people are probably even more unsure and confused now than before they even got the interview. Interview, live interview. And I don't think the attack is over whether or not Kamala Harris did an interview or that she did it right or did it wrong. Maybe it's more so that CNN, did CNN do it right or did CNN do it wrong? But we don't just drop it because we've checked the box to say that an interview was done. Are you happy, America? No, we are not doing the DEI game. We're not playing the DEI game of just checking the box, Jin. And I don't think that the issue of it being a joint interview is really that big of a deal, except for the fact that Kamala Harris is incompetent and she cannot hold her own. And therefore, the first interview should have been a solo interview. Subsequent future interviews, which there should be more of, we shouldn't have gotten to the point where we had to beg and plead to even get this one. Yeah, sure. Include a buddy, a tag along, a friend, a chaperone, a security blankie or emotional support tampon, whatever you want to call them. But there should be at some point Kamala Harris on her own as she is running for president. She's running for this position this to be elected as president herself. She should be able to answer questions. She should be able to, she should be able to handle the press. She should be able to think and, and, and explain and express herself clearly and concisely to the American people, at the very least. And here we go with the adjective game or the adverb game of saying what Trump has been up to is silly. Yeah, okay. I guess spending time with the parents, the family members, the survivors of fallen veterans at Arlington National Cemetery was silly, considering it's how Joe Biden spent, I don't know, 500 plus days on vacation, his entire 
throughout his entire campaign with more to come. That's over 40% with more to come. Or how Kamala was just down the road, four miles away, 10 minute drive. She couldn't be bothered. She couldn't be bothered to pay her respects. But then she does something even worse, okay? She does something even worse. And she tries to pretend like she gives a fuck. Laura Loomer, she posted this asking, why are you trying to use their grief as a way to campaign, Kamala Harris? You could have saved their son and you chose not to. Instead, you embraced Hamas. You're disgraceful to share the contents of your conversation with them as a way to score some type of, or pick up some political points after you killed their son. And this is in response to Vice President Kamala Harris posting on X, showing she did a good thing, checking that box again. Doug and I just spoke to John and Rachel, Hirsch Goldberg Pollen's parents, to express our condolences following the brutal murder of their son by Hamas terrorists. My heart breaks for their pain and anguish. I told them as they mourn this terrible loss, they are not alone. Our nation mourns with them. Come on, give me a break, guys. Give me a fucking break. Meanwhile, Jen's over here trying to drum up and stir up some shit saying that Donald Trump's been re-indicted. Do you know why he was re-indicted? Because the left, Joe Biden, Jill Biden, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, it doesn't matter, Kamala Harris, they all use the weaponization of this legal and judicial system to attack Donald Trump just for reasons and purposes like these for Jen to use as a talking point for a hot take while also claiming that his campaign was rebuked by the U.S. Army because of his presence at Arlington National Cemetery, which has multiple multiple holes in this story. One being he was invited to it was not a campaign stunt like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have done in the past. Three, Axios put this story out, and we can't trust them as far as we can throw them because they're constantly changing what they've posted and written about and reported without providing context for the changes that they made in these reports. Remember the memory hole that Axios provided early on saying that Kamala Harris was never the border czar? Oh, and how about the family members who have all created and posted videos slamming Kamala Harris and Joe Biden for their behavior towards Donald Trump for merely showing compassion, being a real president, being a real American patriot. Now, as I talk to you, I know that you guys are not falling for this game that's being played by MSNBC, but unfortunately, the left is. Democrats are. So Donald Trump was recently shot at one of his rallies. How do you feel about that? I wish he would have gotten shot in the forehead. Really? Yeah. I mean, he's basically like teaching our country like what communism is like. So. So you wish death upon someone? Him. Yeah. Unfortunately, I hate to say that because I don't have hatred in my soul at all. Um, but. I think the way that our country has divided families, marriages, um, all of it about politics alone, like it all really started with him. So, I mean, so do you think wishing someone death is not hateful? I would say, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say, obviously, I don't wish death upon him. I wish that he would be in jail for like the insurrection, which he should be. Okay. Yeah, but you just said you wish that he would get hit in the forehead would have made things a little easier on our country, but actually really probably won it because the Proud Boys would come out and start probably shooting other people, so. The, the Proud Boys? Yeah. Do you think that like 60% of the country are the Proud Boys that support Trump? No, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, wealthy people that only care about the finances and um, you know, there's there's a lot of ignorance, I think, in this country and a lot of fake news and um, a lot of um, just unhealthy, like, bias and political propaganda. I don't think we have a good, 
we're fucked essentially uh, as a country. Okay. We don't have a good we don't have a good um, runner at all. So yeah. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls voters they they eat this up and they love it. So I'm not making this video and having this chat and conversation to try to convince you guys to not believe what she has to say because I feel like you guys are already on the same page with me here. So if that's the case, let me know by smashing the thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. Wildly crude remarks being posted and dark disturbing posts about Kamala Harris. Spoiler alert, Jen, they're all true. Oh, and Trump calling for the jailing of people that should be held accountable for the crimes that they've committed. Just like he said himself, Mark Zuckerberg will spend the rest of his life in prison if he interferes with this election. And don't get me started on January 6th. Pelosi already spilled the beans on that one. And to say that Kamala Harris answered a range of substantive policy questions, give me a fucking break. Mrs. Next question, please. And don't get me started on Tim Walls and his lies and his, his, his web of bullshit. And I'm not trying to get you guys to take issue with Kamala Harris and Tim Walls as Jen Psaki or Jen Psaki, old fire crotch over here is trying to get you to take issue with Donald Trump. See, that's not the game that we play. I only want people to actually have access to information to the truth, to what's really going on and expose the liars for who they are. And they work for MSNBC. Probably but I could do this all day, so bring it on, motherfucker. But better yet, I'd rather let Tulsi Gabbard shut the likes of Jen Psaki or better yet, Dana Bash down. Here, check this out. Remarkable situation in that you are uh, a uh, Democrat who debated her in a Democratic primary and now you are helping the Republican uh, nominee to debate her. A and on that, I remember in 2020, you attacked Harris for being too aggressive as a prosecutor, which is the opposite from what Donald Trump is saying about her as weak on crime. So which is it? What I pointed out in that debate stage in the 2020 campaign was her hypocrisy. It was how she was saying one thing and doing another, how she was prosecuting people for, for smoking marijuana and laughing about it when she was asked about it uh, on a radio show. And I think this goes to the heart of many of these different issues that we're seeing now that Kamala Harris is, is trying to hide from voters is how she says her position is one thing, but her actions and her record show exactly the opposite. And you can point to that on issues related uh, to the economy, issues related to freedom of speech. She says she stands for freedom of speech. And yet, as we've seen time and time again, her and Joe Biden have taken actions both directly and indirectly to censor free speech. Uh, most recently, I can point to my own experience of this, of how the Harris-Biden administration have added me to a secret domestic terror watch list the very day after uh, Kamala Harris was endorsed by Joe Biden. And I was on TV and warning the American people about what I saw as the dangers of a Kamala Harris presidency taking action that was clearly political retaliation. They've done this yep. to a lot of different people, which points to how dangerous it is to have people in power so willing to abuse that power to go after political opponents. Okay. I, uh, I'm not familiar with the secret terror watch list. We're definitely going to follow up on that. Uh, but I do want to move on to what. Of course, you're not familiar. How convenient. Yeah. Political retaliation. And I guess if you want to play that game, then Jen, is that the hill you want to die on? Because Tim Walls and Kamala Harris, they'll make that happen because they don't care. They don't care about you. They don't care about us. They don't care about this country. Hell, I don't even know if they even really truly care about themselves. But just to make sure you're all aware, here's a little clip of uh, Tim Walls here recently and his response to and his reaction to discovering that the hostages in Gaza have been brutally murdered. What's your reaction to the six hostages being found dead um, in Gaza? Right. Thanks, everybody. And this is who America wants to vote for, for vice president and president of the United States of America? <laughs> Give me a fucking break.